main power on, engine powered up. So see how it started to go. Yep. There's obviously a little bit All of diesel. Right. There's obviously a little bit of diesel sitting, sitting in the injectors. Fuck. So that, that's that's um winding over the beast. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> So we had a great day, we've got heaps done on the engine, it's uh, pretty much ready to start. First off, the positives. These two black pipes you can see here, they're the hydraulic pipes for the gearbox. So one's an in and one's an out, uh, and they go down and bolt down into the, the hull here. That heads off to the keel cooling, so that's taken care of and done. The gearbox has been filled with oil, so that part's all finished. The engine's all filled with oil, ready to go. The tank over there, that's our steering uh, hydraulic oil tank. That is filled and ready to go. Another thing that we think is holding the engine back is the physical size of the cables on the starter motor. So these cables are, uh, well, I was told that they were able to hold 200 amps continuous. I doubt that. Um, so I think they're probably a big limiting factor in terms of how much juice is actually getting through from the batteries to the starter motor. There's not a big distance, there's maybe a metre and a half that they have, the power has to travel, um, but it's still enough to get these cables really hot when we start winding it over. So one of the issues that we've found is we don't think our batteries are big enough. So we bought two brand new batteries to run this. Um, combined they have 1200, uh, 1220 cold cranking amps, which should be more than enough to get this started. Um, however, uh, they are not holding charge, so these things are brand spanking new um, and uh, they've been on charge for over 24 hours now um, and we're pumping in a decent amount of amps but they're only holding 12.4 volts um, so I think they're duds um, so I'll probably do a bit of a warranty claim on those um, and maybe try and get the next sort of size up, actually get bigger batteries um, so that's one thing that we've found as an issue so all in all it is possible to wind the motor over right now we, however, we're not getting enough juice through all of the cabling and the weak batteries in order to be able to get the motor to spin fast enough to start. So, in saying all of that... <laughs> blew that up. If I turn that off, nothing works, right? If I turn that on, the motor's powered up, but the start solenoid is not powered up. So I can still press the start button and it won't go. It'll only go if I flip that up. If I flip that up, I can wind the engine. Very slowly. James just uh, getting the battery for inside the engine up. We're going to use the winch. So I got, a, I got a real good deal on some cable for the starter. Um, they had some old stock cable and it was 95 millimeter squared cable, like 95, yeah, 95 millimeter squared is the cross-sectional area of the cable. Currently got 35 millimeter and it's way too small. So if I doubled that, it would be 70 and I got the 95 for less than the cost of the 70. So I was super, super stoked about that. Basically, this just means that I won't lose any real voltage through my starter cable so every bit of grunt that the battery's put in will get straight to the starter motor so yeah and then you say something about you, can, you can't like it's mine it's mine spec so yeah. it's doubled insulated so you can it's like 
if it's underground, for example, and you chuck a um, what do you call it? Like put a, a shovel into the ground or whatever, you, you're less likely to be able to chop into the cable. So basically, it means that the outside is quite tough, um, which is a good thing for the boat. So if we kind of drop something sharp on it, it's not necessarily going to pierce it and go into the cable. So not that we will be throwing too many sharp things around in the, in the engine bay, but at least it's um, got a little bit of protection there. So a good day. Yeah, pretty good day. Yeah. I have to go through and drill these um, new connections. So these these holes here in the new terminal on the cables are all eight millimeters, and nothing on the on the engine system is eight mil. It has to be like half inch or you know bigger sort of thing. So I'm basically going to drill these out to suit whatever it is that we happen to be bolting at the time. Mm -hmm. sitting just up on some vacuum cleaner things at the moment just to make sure I get the height about right. I'm going to build some mounts so that it lifts it off the ground so that any water that comes through here doesn't get stuck and rust out the boat. It's really critical on steel boats to make sure you don't leave any areas where water can sit because it'll rust through the hull and out and sink you. Steel boats die from the inside out. So what I'm doing, straightening up the wires so that it makes it easier to follow where they are in the future, if that makes sense. If I need to trace one back and I don't have labels or anything like that, I can figure it out based on um, just just like running my finger along them, you know, like making sure that they're flat in that way. But what I need to do, I need to flatten down this edge of the cable track because it's going to cause an issue with chafage on my cables here. Okay, so we've tidied the wires up in the cable tray here. Um, Jess is now going to go through, basically follow them all the way forward and across the other side of the engine. So um, there's four cables that go over to the alternator, two big high amperage cables and two sender cables. Um, and yeah, they're not they're not as tidy as we'd like, so um, Jess is just going to sort that bit out. So while she's doing that, I'll sort the batteries out behind me, um, see if we can get some current flowing to the starter motor. <laughs> I love these big new cables, but I realised that I've crimped it 90 degrees, sort of like around 90 degrees from where it needs to be, so I have to try and twist the cable and <laughs> push it back onto itself. I guess. So, and I've got no room to work, so I'm like using all my wrist strength. And oh. <laughs> I can't quite get it. Come on. <laughs> hey. Whoa! <laughs> Drama on the high seas. <laughs> <laughs> Jess, 
is I'll sometimes go out the back of the boat and she's got music cranked up loud on some playlist that she's found on YouTube or something like that. And she's just like getting into it. It's so cool to watch. It's all too beautiful. It's all too beautiful. Hello. <laughs> So it's really critical to make sure that we wind this over in a certain sequence. So we want to make sure that we get oil pressure. To do that we shut off the fuel solenoid valve. Um, basically that stops any fuel going into the engine while we're winding it. And then we can just start spinning the motor over on the starter motor and that allows the oil pump to essentially pressurise all of the galleries. That means we've got a good amount of oil throughout the whole motor before we then engage the fuel pump and start pushing in some fuel into the engine. Diesels don't like running with an air bubble and I created an air bubble by, by running it no fuel to get the oil pressure up. Um, so now I'm trying to get rid of the air bubble like by bleeding the injectors. With these motors, you, to bleed the injectors you basically just keep rock, keep winding them, keep, keep spinning them over on the key. I know that it's sucking fuel in, I think what I probably should do is fill that up again. Might do that now. So I've just got to keep basically getting fuel into the engine essentially. So um, I'll fill this up again and then we'll just keep winding, keep winding, keep winding until we can see diesel coming in here and coming out here and then there's no reason why it shouldn't start at that point. Do they need a bit of time or? They need a bit of time. How long do you want to give them? A couple of hours or something? Yeah, a couple of hours. Let the batteries build right up again and then... So it's charge? Sorry? Charge is the issue? Yeah, we're running out of battery charge because we just, we just keep winding and winding and winding. Yeah. So, like it takes a huge amount of power. Yeah. Like these are, these are quite hot and these are massive cables so there's a lot of power wow. going through. Um, do you think you have enough battery? Oh, definitely. When it's, when it's all got fuel in it and there's no air bubbles, absolutely, we've got enough batteries. It's, okay. just, that, it's just that we're trying to, basically, we're trying to take any air bubbles out of here. You can see one there. There'll be air here and here. That there will probably be down here now. There'll be an air bubble there. There's almost certainly air bubbles in here. There's probably air somewhere in this line. There'll be individual, like, every, there's air bubbles everywhere. So um, that's the hard bit. We have to basically keep winding until we get rid of those. Are you happy with the um, oil pressure? Yeah, oil pressure is fantastic. It's amazing, it's staying um, exactly the same spot, going straight up and staying yeah. it's amazing. So, um, what that basically shows is that if like, the oil system is functioning, even just winding it over it, how many RPM we're winding it, the oil system is functioning great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's, I can't, I mean, there's nothing that I can see that's a problem there, like that's all good so far. Oh, it's all good so far, eh? Yeah, and it's always going to be hard to start this motor when there's no fuel in the system. We have to, like, that's, yeah, it's just one of those things. But everybody that's got one of these motors just says whenever they run out of fuel, just keep winding them and they'll start themselves. But they'll self prime so um, I'm kind of half expecting it to be a bit of a, a slow process to get that bit started. Yeah. Well, we're kind of new. First time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm surprised to try to start the other day with just the bloody the residue or whatever was left in, you know, so like, when I can get fuel to the injectors, I know it's probably going to start up. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. Alright, so we'll give it what you want, two or three hours? Give it a couple of hours, yeah. let the batteries charge up, and then 
will fire back up. So I was googling these fuel pumps, these PT fuel pumps last night, and there's a fuel bleed screw that I didn't know about just up in here, so on the top of the fuel pump. So if I fill that up with diesel, it basically bypasses all of this, the, the filtering system, the little vein pump in here that pushes fuel through, it bypasses a whole lot and puts fuel straight into the, the pistons or the, the whatever it is, the rotary chamber on this pump that pushes fuel forward. So that's what I'm going to try and do carefully, almost certainly. I'm going to pull this everywhere. Right, so I think I know why this isn't starting. Um, we're getting fuel to the filter and we're getting fuel to the pump. So there's a little bleed screw on top of the fuel pump that I've been cracking off and checking that it's got diesel and, and so on sitting in it. Um, that seems to be okay and whenever I wind it over it doesn't seem as if we're running out of fuel in that area. However, uh, I just cracked off the, uh, the main pressure feed pipe that basically goes from the fuel pump up to the back of the engine where, the in where it starts the injector track and we're not getting any fuel through there. So I'm pretty confident that the pump for some reason is not pumping fuel into the engine. So it doesn't matter how many times I'm winding it over without solving that, I'm not gonna solve the engine not starting. So I have to pressurize that somehow. So I'm gonna work on that now. So this is the first time I've actually worked on a Cummins 855 to try and start one. What I didn't realize was there's a little uh, button that basically winds the fuel in or out. So when the button's wound right in, there's just no way that you're going to uh, be able to get any diesel into the motor. Once I found that, the motor fired up absolutely beautifully. big old engine. So, motor started and ran well. Yeah, it's running beautiful. Now, little baby. Um, so, when you start a diesel, there's a couple of colours you look for. There's there's blue, black, or white, um, and black is... Uh, smoke out the exhaust. Yeah, smoke out the exhaust. So, no, not just general fire. No. Um, so, black is excess diesel, white is ignitions too advanced, and blue is motors getting worn out. Um, and I didn't really know what to expect when we started the motor, um, but we got a little puff of black, which is completely normal, and then it ran perfectly clear. And it's been running clear ever since, so we're just absolutely over the moon at, um, at sort of the condition of the motor. We were um, expecting to have to rebuild it. We yeah. knew it was a runner when we brought it. We got it really cheap, um, but we didn't actually yeah. expect it. We knew it had been rebuilt at some point, but we didn't think it had been really well rebuilt. Like yeah. It so, so yeah, ab absolutely over the moon. Yeah. Um, so there's a couple of little minor jobs that we've got to do. So. Um, for some reason I can't turn the motor off with the key, I have to turn it off by winding in the fuel screw. So something's going on with the fuel solenoid that I need to figure out. Um, that's a pretty minor job, it might just be to replace the fuel solenoid, 
$40 part, it's not a big deal. Um, so yeah, I'll figure that out, work out what's going on there. Um, and alternator as well, we're having a bit of issues with hooking the alternator up properly, so um, between uh, Richard, our Patreon in the States, that came over and did uh, a lot of the wiring on the motor, and uh, Cody McMillan in uh, Canada. Um, between those two, we think we figured out what's going on with the alternator. Um, Cody, we're finding it really difficult to figure out what model alternator is actually on this engine because there's no numbers whatsoever. So, um, yeah, Cody's done some digging and he thinks he might have found out the alternator type, so, so that's pretty amazing. Um, so once we get that sort of down the path, we can then put the wires on and, and we'll have uh, charge coming from the alternator, so that'll be pretty cool. Um, so, yeah. Um, it, it's kind of a momentous moment for us. Um, yeah. The engine bay is tidy, the motor runs, yeah. <laughs> the electrics are on their way to being completely sorted. It's pretty amazing, but we didn't get here alone, and we just want to really um, thank the people who have been involved along the way. It's been really three years of working. We've had the boat four years, but three years um, of working at it. Yeah. And um, most recently, Richard um, from the States um, helped with the electrics and it helps with heats around the boat, but particularly spent quite a lot of time in here with Dane. Yeah. Both, both Richard and Michelle, his wife Michelle, came over yeah. for a month um, and they touched pretty much every area of the boat. So It's um, so hard working and, and just so great to be around. Yeah, yeah. Really motivating to be around. It's was, it was neat. Yeah. Um, so, um, yeah, so so really wanted to just, just thank Richard and Michelle for, for coming over and giving us a hand and, and helping us basically kickstart getting this motor into, into a running condition. Um, and then also uh, one of our friends from Brisbane, Adam, um, who saw us through the channel and, and came up, he drove, it out. Brisbane's about five hours away from where we are, so he drove up and spent, I think, three or four days with us yeah. and um, hung out. And over the back here, there's a stainless pipe that basically connects the engine room with the bridge, so we can run all of our electrical systems through there. Adam um, is a sparky, and he helped me basically figure out exactly how we're gonna be running all of our control cables and so on up to the bridge. Um, so that was something that I had no experience with and it was just phenomenal to have his help because it saves a huge amount of guesswork. Um, and there's a couple of people that helped in the engine bay that before we started the filming and that, so we don't really have any footage of them, but they were a massive part of this actually happening. So, um, the Let me just explain, yeah. um, one of the, the strategies we have on Brewpig is we do all the work that we can um, to save money, but mainly to be self-reliant. We know the boat inside and out, we know the systems. Yeah. But what we do is anywhere in the boat that's critical, we have a professional come in and check our work. Yeah, so um, I'll do the work and then have them double check what I've done to make sure it's spot on. Yeah, so um, Gary... So, yeah. Is, um, Gary was a mechanic that works on trawlers um, and I aligned all the shaft and checked the shaft for run out and wobble and all that sort of stuff and then Gary came through and double checked on my work. And the mounts um, and... Yeah, and then, and then yeah, checked on my mounts and, and checked the way that I've um, aligned the gearbox and the engine and everything like that. So um, yeah, it was because of Gary that I kind of got the final you know, tick off that all of this is, is in line and, and is, in, is in great condition. Um, so much so that he mentioned that he was really pleased with how aligned it was. Um, the, the um, allowance is one thou per, per inch of shaft diameter, uh, so, sorry, per inch of flange diameter. So we've got a 12 inch flange, so we can have the, it theoretically can be out by um, 12 thou. And I got the whole thing to within, I think it was half a thou. So he was really stoked at how, how well aligned it was. A um, couple of people that have helped us with actually getting the engine into a, like a clean, really clean state. So in the very, very early days, a mate of mine, Rob, um, would come up pretty regularly and help me strip stuff out of this room so you know ripping out the big electrical boxes and all of the tags and um, old uh, wiring trays and just all of the junk that was left in here um, when they stripped the boat out and uh, yeah Rob was a big, big part of actually helping me rip all of that out and getting the room into a clean state. Um, Rob's a, um, a diesel engineer um, yeah. so Damon had used to huddle around the engine for, for hours humming and hurrying it was really funny. <laughs> Making the room room noises. Um, <laughs> um, and then, yes, and then uh, Andy um, is a, a hydraulic specialist that... Um, Actually, a, a really big shout out to Andy. Um, yeah. I wish we'd be able to acknowledge him more, but um, Andy helped Dane do the systems of the hydraulics for the motor yeah. um, and understood our wanting to be independent and self-reliant. Um, but he, he, he really helped Dame understand everything, provided some of the tools Dame needed so he didn't have to buy them. He was just amazing. He, he was really helpful. So, so I never touched... Um, hydraulics before in my life. I, I knew nothing about them and um, and yeah Andy pretty much straight away got the brew pig ethos you know and and, and he was he was into it so he, he basically helped me design the entire hydraulic system um, 
he uh, left his you know five thousand dollar crimping set and you know flaring set and so on with me and, and and just said yeah go for it so and then every couple of weeks he'd come back and we'd do the next bit and so on and and uh, yeah we managed to build the, the, from front to back the boat's got new hydraulics throughout new pumps new pipes um, everything you know and um, it, that, I just it, I would never have been able to afford to do it if I hadn't have had Andy's help and. I now have the skills to be able to repair the hydraulic system anywhere in the world, so um, I'm really indebted to Andy. So um, yeah, just really want to Thank say you. thanks. Yeah. Um, and lastly, uh, so not least, <laughs> lastly, <laughs> but definitely not least, one of our uh, favourite guys in yeah. the world, actually, uh, Tony and Bigfoot. So mm. Tony is the guy that we bought the boat off, um, and he owns the local sandblasting group here. Um, Tony. Tony's awesome. He, he helps us basically get the boat into a condition that we would never have otherwise been able to do. Um, so, so Bigfoot is the guy that mans the sandblaster, and Tony's the, Tony's the one that you know lets us do it in between all the other trawlers and so on. So, um, Bigfoot, it's a huge shout out to Bigfoot because yeah. we've stuck him in some really small and awkward tanks <laughs> so to, to sandblast, and we've you know sealed him off in this room, and he sandblasted in this room, and, and yeah. he's been in some horrid conditions to get this boat you know in a great great state. Um, and yeah, so just a shout out to, to Tony for making all of that possible and also for Bigfoot for actually doing it. Yeah. Yeah. So, here we are. So, um, thanks guys. Yeah. Um, onwards to the next, the next episode, the next job. Yeah, so we've got a couple of things coming up. So I'll let you know what we're doing uh, in the future episodes. So we've got, um, we are building a, a hidden vent. So um, similar kind of, in, it's very simple, but in the same token, it's, it's kind of a neat little design that we've come up with. Basically, we need to ventilate the freezer room, and we can't let water get in, and we also can't have a great big bulky vent um, clogging up a walkway. So we've come up with a way of making a hidden vent, um, so that's going to be the next episode coming out. Um, after that, we've also got uh, dogs, so we're, we're um, sealing up the, the watertight door that's behind us over here, so we're going to be... Um, uh, yeah, we're going to be making like like big tight dogs and uh, watertight seals, fireproof and waterproof um, seals for that door. Uh, so that's going to be a, a neat little thing. And then we also have a live feed coming up shortly. So um, it'll be again, it'll be an Ask Us Anything. So um, if you're not already subscribed, um, check out uh, sub subscribe below, and you'll get a no notification when the live feed's coming out. Um, but we'll give lots of notification that's coming up in the next yeah. two weeks. Oh, and that reminds me, thank you to everybody that has subscribed to the channel. <laughs> we passed 10,000 subscribers like, <laughs> on our 50 second episode. So like one, one year after we started doing this, we yeah. made 10,000 subscribers and we like, it's like we can't, we can't <laughs> wait. It's pretty awesome. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you everyone. Yeah, so thanks, thanks to everyone that subscribed. And if you're not already subscribed and you like our stuff, please subscribe. It's a massive buzz when we get <laughs> another little notification that someone's joined. We watch. They even know yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. 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 So thanks very much guys. We'll see you next week. See ya. Just leave it all behind The river's gonna cry when you